for the most part, it was just like any other um, childhood. You know, we, we rode our bikes outside, we watched Friends, I listened to Backstreet Boys. I mean, um, I was very much a, uh, quote, normal um, American teenager. Um, I went to driver's ed, you know, I, I joined clubs at school, I participated in pep rallies, I was in the sign language club. I mean, so all of that was just kind of like my norm. And then um, post 9-11, it almost became where I had to identify myself as a Muslim first, um, and then whether I was not necessarily going to be accepted or not, but whether um, certain people or groups of people were going to judge me a certain way. Uh, my name is Gadir Kadura. I am a academic guidance counselor at Brighter Horizons Academy. It's a private Islamic school in Garland, Texas. Um, so I was a freshman in high school. Um, it was first period photojournalism. Um, around 9 o'clock there was an announcement on the um, intercom just telling all the students to stay in the classrooms, that they were locking the front doors, and that there was a terrorist attack. Um, being a very naive, young, you know, 15-year-old, I was like, what's a terrorist? I don't know, like, wh what's going on? Um, each of our classrooms had a TV on there, so uh, all the teachers turned on the TVs, and we were able to um, kind of watch the news all unfold, and I guess just the image of, you know, the planes, um, you know, going into the buildings and them falling and people running, and it's just um, a big pit in your stomach. You're like, what is going on in the world? You kind of feel like instantly you, uh, you became an adult because the world became more serious at that point. Um, and let alone being a, a Muslim at that point, I wasn't wearing the scarf. And so I was like, wait, what, like, who, who are these people? Who are these Arabs? Who are these Muslims? Like, they look like me, they talk like me, you know? But, um, I think at that moment it was definitely, uh, um, a, a big awakening. And yet, I didn't know what uh, to expect for the for the months and years that were gonna be coming up. Actually, not having the um, the the feeling of having to put like labels. I feel like uh, pre nine eleven, everyone was who they were. Um, I didn't have to label you as are you a friend or not a friend. Are you um, for me or against me? You know. Um, do you believe I belong in America or don't believe I belong in America, you know? Um, and so um, kind of just having that um, labelless uh, society, um, at least uh, I guess as, a, as an emotion, that's definitely what I miss. Um, post 9-11, I feel like that's, uh, you, have to, you have to categorize people. You have to put them um, in a certain box or have a label to where, um, you know, do they hate me, do they not? Do they um, accept me or do they not, you know? So. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably say that. So the great thing, and I mean, I can say that I've observed this from at least our community in Dallas, um, and then personally, is just the um, open dialogue. I feel like that has been absolutely uh, amazing in the amount of like interfaith groups that have really kind of stepped up to kind of build more bridges and have that greater understanding about each other. Um, and then even for me personally, post 9-11, I felt like uh, in a very ironic way, I became more confident because I felt like I needed to speak up to represent, um, you know, my community or a Muslim American um, to kind of redefine that narrative that, that's being, um, you know, spread along certain news outlets. So, um, yeah, I guess the great thing is just, you know, the coming together of, of people um, just to kind of, you know, stamp out that uh, hate and bigotry.